Death Watch. Hi, this is Chris. I'll be your GM for today. For this, the third session of A Prophecy of Dawn and Dusk, or Dusk and Dawn, sorry. And with me are the usual suspects. Start on my left here. I'm Brandon. Uh, I'll be playing Landon Velox, and uh, I'm currently on my way to try to rescue my brother from whatever trouble he's gotten himself into. Hello, and I am Travis, and I am playing the merchant Hadria Selenius Ordius. In the Masters game, the Widow's Field is when the player leaves a path to the king open. This is a trap if the player knows the game well. The last few days make me think that I am, in fact, being led into a Widow's Field. Mm. But I cannot yet see how the trap is going to close. <laughs> and I am John playing Jardine, a.k.a. Dane Glass. And I am finally free, or free for the moment. Free for the moment. I like it. So, last time, lots of traveling and trying to get out of the city is basically what it boils down to for now. So let's get started. Uh, I'll read a little excerpt from the Libri Solaris. Or Sol? Solaris. In those days, Sol, the righteous fury, did make war upon the abyss, where at the end of his trek across the heavens he would descend past the bulwark of stone that was Terra, her mighty body the very shield that separated the heavens on high from the roiling abyss. Down he would descend until his very light did vanish from the world, and thus day would become night, and each night the entirety of humanity, humanity did re weep and pray for the return of soul, for the return of the light of day. All right. Hadrius Ordi Ordius, or Ordis, Ordius, and Dane, uh, we'll start with you. It's early morning. On the twelfth of spring, it's still dark out. It would have been around midnight when you guys went through the second gate. The press of Lachlan soldiers is now over. Behind you, the gate stands open, and the sounds of steel on steel and gunfire echo throughout the night. Nearby, a group of men are being passed the empty guns over the wall and passing back loaded ones, passing loading ones back over to keep the uh, the fire going. There's another group of soldiers that are beginning to form up. These ones are armed with shields and spears and their captains yelling orders. So you're currently on the road just past the second gate. And things have thinned out enough for us to proceed mm -hmm. our wagon. Yeah, you can like you might want to bring it off to the side of the road to get around. But yeah, uh, if you don't move soon, you probably will have a second press. Right. Yeah, well, I'll take the opportunity or signal to Dane to, since I think he was holding the lane, reins at the, when we left off. Okay. Do you want them or do you want me to try and drive it? <laughs> no, I think we both probably can't drive a wagon. I didn't realize there was no. a, a drive skill. I, didn't, I missed it. <laughs> you also get minus 10 for it being a four horse wagon. Right. Yeah. But I think, I think you should. But you don't have to worry about that unless you are in some sort of stressful situation. Right. Which I'd never drive my wagon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll take the reins if you offer them up. Or... Yeah, I'll, I uh, start I'll pass them looking over. At your, I need to start looking at your guys' character sheets more. I didn't know you didn't have a drive at all. I think I put it into ride horse, not knowing You can switch it if you want. What does ride begin at, though? I think it's different for each animal. I also need to know what the drive skill begins at. All right, just a second here. ERP. Characters are way better climbers than Call of Cthulhu characters. I'm going to say horse starts at 15. Okay. And I'll say uh, wagon starts at 10 for you. We'll just do that. So I'm not a great wagon driver, but I know a few things. But yeah, I'll grab those reins and flick them, get the team going, and try to move off the side and around these soldiers. Yeah, you don't need to do a skill check for that. So yeah, that happens without a problem. Of the soldiers eventually pass by, or pass by at a fairly quick pace, and you hear the captain yelling uh, for him to form up and to form a wall on the other side, essentially, and allow any refugees through and allow their men to retreat as need be, because it looks like they're do whatever they're doing on the other side. They're not planning to keep it. That said, it is rather late. It's past midnight, so. Uh, the streets here are darkened. They're untouched by battle. The immediate area around the second gate seems to have been kind of taken over 
So like various houses or inns have been kind of uh, changed into uh, makeshift encampment for Lachlan, uh, Lachlan's men. Well, Dane, how about we get well clear of this battle and camp a little rough tonight? What do you think? How how long were we stuck in that town from the time that we had gotten those letters? And how long had we been traveling before? You were stuck for about the rest of the day. Before that, it was several days. I believe you were on the road. Maybe just a short rest as those, uh, those royal... I can't remember if we called them dragoons last time or not. What yeah, were they were they? dragoons. Yeah, as the royal dragoons, they will not rest until their objective is complete. Yeah, so you've been on the road about five days, six days before reaching the gate. So you're saying you want to push through the night. I think we should put as much distance as possible between us and this gate before we, we truly take a rest. As again, we don't want them to get a hold of us okay well i suppose the team is rested you better get to cover then mr dane zala uh, you wouldn't be a mister or a sir are you young uh yeah fairly young (laughs) all right uh who has the lowest luck added to you i think we're both the same at it oh yeah Yeah. roll it success all right it doesn't rain tonight so you guys push through yeah into the dawn well, you can sleep in the back of the wagon under the wool if you want, Dane. And I'll drive on through the night. I'll keep you company for a little bit before I crawl back into my cubby hole. All right, so the rest of the night passes uneventfully, and the and solar dawns bright the next day. Seems like some of the clouds have sort of thinned out, but it's still mostly overcast. The houses still appear mostly abandoned in this part, but they're no longer part, or, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they haven't been taken by Lachlan soldiers. Um, I can't think of the dang word. Quartering? Yeah, they're not quartered. Which sounds odd if I say it that way, though. But the, the soldiers aren't be, aren't housing in any of them yet. It just seems like people this close to the gate got spooked and retreated further in. Uh, there are starting to be smaller groups of people that have been kind of walking on the road, like you caught up to some of the tail end. Okay. Yeah, so I'll drive the team until it looks like they start flagging, I would imagine, sometime in the early morning, and then I'll tell Dane that we will have to rest because it won't do any good to move our wagon with dead horses. Yeah. Not unless you know some kind of necromancy. Roll a 1D100. No no necromancy, but... Even a few hours in between or between us and the, that gate is better than uh, than where we were. Eighty one. Yeah, they lag fairly early on. <laughs> Maybe they're getting long in the tooth. Lazy coastal horses. But they're not so bad that you you don't think you could keep pushing them if you wanted to into midday. I don't think I'd want to go to midday. I'd want to plan a stop, and the as soon as the sun's up. Okay. Because I myself would probably be tired too. And so at that point, we're still amongst like houses and stuff in the area. Yeah. It's still yeah. settled. Yeah. These are like village houses. Like most of the stuff in the spiral is essentially villages that okay. are. So, you know, small stone houses usually with a fairly sizable plot of land, usually to the right or left of the house that is used for like communal growing of vegetables. Well,. I have to rest the horses, Dane. Let me see about if one of these good farmers will or villagers will let us use their land to crop crop them. All right. And I'll pick a house at random once I make that decision, which, which one's in the view. Mm-hmm. And I'll uh, park the wagon in front of it and get out and go knock on the door or call to the owner. All right. Roll a luck. Failure. <laughs> All right. So, no one answers. All right. Well, remember I have that writ. (laughs) And know that by the order of Duke Lachlan, I can crop where I wish. Crop my team where I wish. So, I'll be like, well, this is good as any. And I'll unhitch them and you go through the process of, like, brushing them down and, and, you know, letting them hobble them and let them, you know, start grazing around. Water them if I need to. 
Yeah, the uh, there is a small field nearby that's been okay. Not field, but like garden. Essentially, it's been kind of fenced yeah. off. And once I have them out there grazing, I'll probably ask Ollie to keep an eye on the horses, and I'll write a brief message for the owner of the home if they come back or something like that with a few coins for the use of their land. Okay. I think I can write. Yeah. You're literate, so, yeah. yeah. At 50%. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's that's pretty literate. Yeah, that'd for this like, era. Yeah. Mm. All right, so that's what you're going to do? Yeah, I'm not sure how long they would have to rest for before we could go again, but... You enroll versus a 60. Roll P100 versus a 60? Yeah. Oh, At, 75. You think they might be ready by nightfall okay. but you know if you want to keep traveling at night that's up to you on that so uh, i don't mind i'll see what dane thinks about it do you favor the night sir for travel uh I mean, we're on a road yeah it seems safe I th enough i, I don't I think really have haven't much... been out uh of of the uh royal palace too much so i if you're confident in it then so am i well it seems we would I don't think we have much choice until we get out of, what, the southwestern exit? Is that right? Yeah, the yes. South Sea, or the, or the Sea exit. Yeah. yeah, to the North Sea Road, right? Yeah. And then we'll have a little bit more cho choice, but we're, what, in a valley? Mm-hmm. Because how many days would you put that at? If you want, you well, I guess you're actually asking Tadrius there. Yeah, how would I know? Ah, uh, yeah, you came down here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I know the answer to that. Specifically, <laughs> and I'm going to tell it to you right now. <laughs> Do you want me to give you the answer? Or did you measure it out? <laughs> I didn't measure it out. I'm, I'm on, um, I think, uh, oh, Landon's map. Sorry so. about that. No problem. Actually, I think this one might work out better for you. Yeah, so we, we're in the pink quadrant. Mm -hmm. And where's the exit at? Uh, right, right where that arrow is pointing. Here. Yeah. So is it? Kind of a straight shot along this. Yeah, I, I think it works out about the same because of how the hexes are shaped. Yeah, so it looks like what, like five days, maybe mm -hmm. a half week. Yep. So I'll tell Dane as much that we still have a good stretch to go, and I think the lands look mostly like this, populated with villagers mm -hmm. until we get to the gate, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um, most of the nobles long ago kind of abandoned their estates down in the valley. It's like a summer home sometimes. But, like, there's no fortresses actually down there. There hasn't been a reason to keep a fortress down in the valley, right? So all of their castles are up in the, on the actual plains above the, uh, the, the crater. It's like a plateau there or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, Dane, that's what I think, you know, we should, we can travel at night. That's fine by me. We'll just have to rest the horses because it won't do us any good if, if you're friends arrive and we have a half dead team mm. all right so you're gonna do you want sleeping? to and if you if you feel that it would be better to travel during the day maybe we do a short or it's maybe start a little bit earlier than uh than nightfall and just do a short travel yeah it might arouse less suspicion i have a hard time describing to somebody who questions me as a merchant, why I prefer to travel at night. So let's do that. Tell him you're a vampire. Oh, I'm a vampire. <laughs> okay, go right ahead then. <laughs> Occam's razor, sir. The simplest explanation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then we'll rest up today. We'll set out in the evening. We'll travel, you know, till about midnight. And then we'll rest them again and sleep up and okay. try to get on a daytime routine. So that will probably double the time. Okay. Is that... All right with you? Yeah. Okay. So are you going to do anything during this period of time? Like, Hadrius is going to be sleeping, right? Dane? Well, uh, during the rest, I mean, I'll stay up for a little bit and just enjoy, again, enjoy the, the freedom. I'll talk with uh, Ollie if he'll converse, try to get a uh, little bit of information about uh, Hadrius. Where does he come from? Is he an honest man, and can I trust him? <laughs> I think I'll let Travis uh, play Ollie on that. Uh, he comes from Morris Oris, sir. And uh, if you can trust him, I don't know. I've only worked for him for um, a little over a month now. 
Does, but uh, his does fate is treat you? No, I say he has a high opinion of himself. <laughs> Lofty goals, you know. I think. <laughs> never mind. I think he's one of the best <laughs> fellows I've ever come to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to game the system for my player character. No. Yeah, but that's truthfully what he says. Just uh, he's only worked for him for a short amount of time just to travel up here. He's paid what's owed to Ollie, the Ooh. wages. I guess depending on how good Ollie is at chess, he's beat the pants off of Ollie a bunch of times and probably offered a bonus if he kept playing the you know the chess game with him, even if he didn't want to. <laughs> 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 Assuming I had the coin to do that as... Hadria, oh, come on, I'll pay you a few extra pennies or whatever for for take, a game each night. <laughs> take his whole week's you should, pay. Yeah, you should play him against play his him paycheck. His pay. I think Ollie would probably would have wised up out of that one in the travel though, <laughs> if he wasn't much of a gamer. Lost that. my whole first two weeks. <laughs> uh, you should have access to his uh, his character sheet. Oh, Ollie's? Yeah, let's see what we gave him. Uh, is it under NPCs? I didn't even put a gaming in there. What is it? Int and pow. So he's got a 20. 20. <laughs> yeah, you were yeah. probably schooling him. Yeah, so the arrangement Hadrius will have with Holly is that he will, if he gets tired of losing, because Hadrius will never let him win, <laughs> uh, he'll pay him a few extra, like a bonus, to keep playing every night. And that's kind of what we've been doing. All right. But Hadrius does try to foster his relationships whatever they may be so he doesn't try to tr he doesn't treat ollie poorly at least from his point of view okay of course right. i'm a bit of man i'm a bit of man dane so <laughs> he's done a few slights he hasn't noticed <laughs> and i won't forget <laughs> all right so we'll kind of fade out on you guys and at that same on that same day as you were preparing to bed down in your wagon landon is just exiting out of the southern forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some ne'er-do-well was accosting me. He did approach you and declared with a smirk upon his face, your money or your life. There you go. Yeah, and he had a crossbow, and there were other crossbowmen, is that what you said? Yeah, there. you can see. Oh, it's like, I didn't bring you guys over, did I? Well, there we go. So you can see others up there. Okay. How much distance is these hexes? For the most part, I'd say uh, don't mind them too much, but you can move 12 on a horse. And technically, you'd be closer to about here when he stepped out because you failed your spot. And you have 10 other men with you, mm -hmm. which I'll pull out here. And they are kind of flanking you uh, or riding directly behind you. If you want to be in the lead. Yeah. I'd, I'd want me and Chelsea's. Chelsea's to be in the lead there. So yeah, they have crossbows aimed at you. The one down here is declaring your money or your life. You can roll another spot. I believe you failed at your strategy I did. last time. So that's what kind of let you get into this position. Or Yeah. Let me see. Do I? All right. So I'm 17. What am I wearing? You're wearing a mix of half plate and ring mail. All right. So are these crossbows a threat to me mm. in this armor? Yeah, they could potentially be. Okay. All right. So you set a spot. Mm hmm So failure on the spot. But also, I'll be looking to Chelsea's what he thinks we should do here. Like, I'm 17 years old, and I've, like, I'm assuming I haven't been in, like, battles, right? Have mm. I been in battles? No, like. Just like a duel here, there, what? what yeah, what? like just duels in Mars or practicing and stuff, but not actual battles. Now, yeah, you you do have you are learned of yeah. battles, maybe not as much as you could be, right? Uh, as far as command goes, but you know you do have some fairly decent str strategic knowledge, I believe. Okay. Uh, he knows that you're pressed for time. Mm -hmm. He says we can just run them down and be on our way. I don't think their crossbows can reach us too far if we just charge yeah, my lord that that's actually that's my instinct too that's what i was gonna say uh i'll just say we'll just go okay top speed you know with the intention to just straight run him over if he gets in the way <laughs> all right so like I, uh know. he 
uh, I'll give him a chance to dodge, but uh, if not, what will happen is you'll roll your ride. Okay. And then you'll do hor- damage based on your horse. Okay. All right, so the ones that are readied with crossbows are going to fire into your you and, at you and your group of men. Yeah. So the one that you're riding down will fire at you because you're a very obvious target coming at him. <laughs> it goes wide. He's kind of panicking. Then the five on the... or Is it four? I think there's five up there. Yeah. All right, the five on the ridge. There's one hit. There's two... There's three, four, five. All right, so we'll deal damage to your guys here. They're firing just into the crowd yeah. of your men. Your men are armored similar to you, mm-hmm. so most of them, like uh, any of the fives, should be negated, but the sevens will get through. Yeah, so is that how it works in this game? Like the AP... If it's not above the AP, then it just doesn't do anything? Yeah. Okay. There are some versions where your armor will take damage yeah. and lower by one every every time. Uh-huh. I think that just gets into a bit too much it, math. That's a lot to track. So I'm just not going to do it, but yeah. So uh, so does it need to beat the AP or match the AP? It needs to beat. If it okay. matches, it's just zero. Okay. And it's the same with your shield. Your shield, like if you had a shield, yeah. your shield would have, say, 22 hit points. That's how much it stops. Okay. And then anything over goes on to the hit location. Right. That... So I have, because it does the AP by location on, on mine, right? Mm-hmm. So like any of those that hit any of the, like. Thank you. Right. So the the seven, if the sevens, if they hit me in my legs, they would do damage. But in my torso, they would. Yeah. Okay. Correct. For some reason. Oh, there it is. Landon's on our guard. It's like, for some reason, I don't have your men, and I don't have the right version of them. So we'll just duplicate this. All right. So we have two, I believe, that hit and de- dealt damage. Yeah. So then you would roll for hit location down at the very bottom. You want me to do it? Uh, yeah, you can if you want. Down at the very bottom, you'll see uh, dodge, fumble, and then at the far right, there's a a sword icon and a bow icon. Yeah. Roll the bow icon or click the bow icon. All right. The one gets hit in the right leg and roll it again. Left leg. Yeah. Uh, sounds like uh par for course on bows. <laughs> oh, actually, no, that's not that bad. All right. So four and five. So you hear two of your men cry out in pain. Oh, that's unacceptable. I'll punish them later though. We've got to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let the power go to my head and have him executed for weakness. <laughs> All right. So, Landon, now roll your ride skill. Okay. Is this one of the ones where I have a different, where I have two different mounted? No, that's mounted saber. Okay. Oh, yeah. If you wanted to attack him, you it, what, okay. what it is is if you want to do two skills at a time, like, say, hide and move si- in stealth. Yeah. You would roll the lowest of the two. I so gotcha. on mount, your saber becomes your, your horse yeah, skill. Yeah, I'll just ride him down then. Let's see. Still a failure. <laughs> All right. Do I just, like, ride by him then? or? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, he, you ride close to him, and then, let's see, we'll, where is it? Um, we'll just do this real quick. I think that's more than enough to do it right there. So if you want, Brandon, let's see if he dodges first. He's going to have to dodge three times at least. So he dodges the first one. Minus 20 on the second one. He dodges the second one. He's a wily fellow. And he dodged the third one. So yeah. Nice. If you want, I can keep rolling. It's Barry Sanders out here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I just, as long as. Uh, he would eventually yeah. not be able to dodge and would get trampled by your re- remaining men if they were yeah. so inclined. So Yeah. I mean, we are so inclined. So. All right. So that was three. So here comes seven more. One, two, three. There's a failure. Five. <laughs> this guy, man. <laughs> All right. He's made out of water. He's like, you must become smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, this dodge would have to be a critical, and it would have to be made at minus 60 now. So I think it technically can't. All right. So. Fumbled. He was one, in the Matrix. Two, for a minute. three. Four, five, ten d six. 
32. All right. How many was that? Seven? Roll. Or so, yeah. Roll five hit locations. Oh. And we'll divide it up amongst those. He's more than dead. Right arm. Left, left arm, arm. Left, left leg, leg. Chest. Oh, you're rolling missile hit location. Oh, sorry. I should do But that. it works about the same. <laughs> Abdomen. Okay. Left arm. Abdomen. Right leg. <laughs> Trampled. Chest guts out. All right, yeah, he, <laughs> he, he, he it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 and your men run that one brigand down. Yeah, uh, in a spectacular fashion, and pay the rest no heed because you have more important business to be upon. Yeah, out of the way, Peck. Yeah, <laughs> peasant. Maybe we'll come back and take vengeance, but right now we've got important things to do. I uh, remember you. Behind you, you hear the sounds of other brigands kind of you know an outcry and uh if you do look you see more of them running out of the trees okay likewise armed with crossbows yeah um move landon but you're fairly much or you're pretty much out of their range by the time most of them get out there some of them will take pot shots at you it will be a difficult which is one fifth travis yeah oh, like, we if agree. we're trying to be like hard and yeah yeah yeah, it's all good. They were light crossbows and the range was just not sound. And uh, they all fall short or go wide. Mm -hmm. And you quickly leave them l quite literally in your dust. Yeah, it's like, that's what Jamie said, right? You always charge archers because they're cowards. Or... Oh, right. In the books. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if that was in the show or not. But... Mm. Probably been said by a bunch of people <laughs> that's no. probably true i think it's probably been said throughout <laughs> most of history because almost every person that has to do melee fighting hates archers yeah but i mean if you think about it like if you could really put yourself in the position of a dude with a crossbow with a horse charging at you it's yeah. gonna be hard to focus you know <laughs> yeah i mean because even if you hit are it's you gonna still stop? moving right, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what's that that's one of the... well those laws might not have been invented back in that time period which laws where an object continues to move. Oh, right. mm -hmm. They didn't have Newton's law. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, before, you had to be careful. You just jump and float away. Yeah, they had yeah. the physics of the church. <laughs> how else do you or explain... Or physics. Yeah, how yeah. else do you explain being able to ride around on a broom at night? <laughs> exactly. All right, so healing naturally. All right, so your characters heal 1d3 hit points per game re week. That's that's the normal healing we or rate. Normally, your game master rolls the healing dice. Oh, I missed it. You got wounded on the legs? Uh, two of his men got wounded on oh. the legs, number four and five of his royal guard. Yeah, or I, not royal guard, but uh, honor guard. I would never be so pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> <be injured. laughs> All right. So the rest of your journey to a point progressives fairly uneventful. The forests of Mars Oris are behind you. Okay. You can no longer smell the salt air. That's been passed for a while, a while now. Well, I would just want to, you know, as soon as we've gone a safe distance, we'd need mm. to stop and see to their injuries so they don't, you know, bleed to death. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it's like I said, it's a fairly light wound. Yeah. It just made it past some of the rings on their, on the ring mail. That, okay. It's like a ring mail skirt that hangs down below as opposed to actual greaves. Right, yeah. These are more... um like ceremonial armor they're not they're actual like battle armor and if they were actually going to war it would have been full yeah. or half male plate uh, all the way down okay um but yeah uh just barely punctured barely stuck into their their leg so they they'll be fine but it is a good idea to bandage it up because i do plan on having diseases mm. and infections set in which we still might have to do here but we'll give it a little bit but yeah so for the next couple days after this encounter, it's rolling hills and plains, lots of grassland, farmland. You pass the occasional village if you want to do anything, resupply, restock. Yeah. Uh, you know, bless the people with your right, yeah. awesome nobility. Burn the village down. <laughs> or burn the village down. <laughs> Looks like we got a, a, a classic a Jeffrey Lord's move. Yeah. And he fits right in with his family. Like I kind of wrote the backstory that he might not fit in with his family but so far he's fitting in fine and three days have passed since that encounter okay in the forests of southern domicilis or northern mars oris depending on who you wish to uh argue with on the border 
and they've given way to the Grayslands. Due north, you can make out the jet black walls that surround the lip of the Kunabula, which is the name of the crater oh. that Damas Solis sits in. Okay. It's uh, you can roll. Uh, is this the crater when he came down mm -hmm. to Earth? Okay, or whatever the world is. Yeah. yeah. If you wish, you can roll. I believe it starts with a V. It's like Ventuslinga, your language skill. The language here. Let me go look and I think you have it. I have own. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I have Ventus, Vetus Lingua. Yeah, it translates to the old tongue. It's what they would have. Success. The Kunabula means cradle. It's the okay. it's where he was birthed, essentially, or it's where he his first days of infancy were uh took place. Okay. Uh actually let's get everyone on to the proper map here so that way uh here we go. Oh, I accidentally almost deleted it. And so you are now there. Is that on the appropriate layer? Can you see your token? Yeah. Okay. I, well, I don't know. I don't recognize my token. I saw it, yeah. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's about where you are. Okay. You can, and the Kunabula is, you'd see the walls there. Yeah. And so it's ringed by this black glass like stone. Okay. And then. In the case of the southern exit, which is right there, uh, a natural stone fortress has been built up around it. Okay. And then outside of that is a town. Uh, they, call, they call them gate towns. There's two of them. There's one on the south and one to the north. Okay. And people kind of gathered there. They started as kind of like shanty towns and then eventually grew to be fairly bustling because as Travis and, or as uh, Hadrius and Dane are discovering... It's a long journey, and so people would prep in, in the early gate towns. If you wish, my lord, you may roll a spot. So you're seeing the jet black walls that surround the lip of the Kunabula. To the northeast, you see several lazy pillars of smoke rising into what is now a dark overcast sky. Okay. And this is the 15th, by the way. All right, so let's see what I see. Success. All right. You spot several banners belonging to several encampments that are positioned outside of what you would determine to be siege engine range around the south gate. And they are the banners of Duchessa Sarcerdos, who is the, her borders is this orange box here, right? Okay. And Can you spell that name for me? S-A-R, or is it S-A-C, sorry, E-R. DOS. Okay. And that may even be wrong, but it's how I've been spelling it thus far. And Good let enough. me, and we can double check my spelling because right here is where, where her armies are stationed. Okay. So her, her, her realm is the orange square. Mm -hmm. So she's outside of her. Yeah. Okay. So what it is, is the section where they rule is both in the spiral and up on the plane. Okay. So technically her kind of, she, because there's a civil war going on amongst this area, she can't get supplies down into the bottom or into the Kunabula. Mm -hmm. And she, so she's, her men are split in half. So she's okay. kind of got to go through Duchessa Bellis, who is the, the pink boundaries to get to her men or to even get anywhere into the actual Damas Solis uh, city proper. Yeah. Which is down in the center, down down there. Okay. You don't know, but actually, if you want, I'll accept a bargain etiquette, uh, a, a charisma check. What else would work for you? Status? To hear rumors from any of the towns you had passed by. You can give me three of those rolls if you want. All right. We'll do status. You have a failure, a success, and a success. All right. So... The failure, you hear that Rex Alexander, or they, they don't call him Alexander out in, the, out in the villages yet. They call him Edric still, that uh, you've been hearing that he's raised himself to king. This is all old information. You've already known this for a while now. In fact, you learned it before most of Mars Oris did, because your father sent a missive telling you to essentially prepare for war. Yeah. <laughs> on the second, or on the first success... You hear that the city has been cleared of any rebellious or rebellion or rebellious elements 
and that the first spiral has fallen to Alexander's men. Mm. Uh, with the second rumor, you hear that Lord Lachlan has joined forces with uh, Duchessa Bellis, and they hold the second gate, and that he has given her men, or that he's given his men to her, like he's still uh, commanding them, and that they plan to hold out as long as possible. You could put this together as they're waiting for the nobles that are currently gathering at Duke's Lowe's Castrum, because mm -hmm. they had gathered, they'd retreated, gathered there to call their banners. Yeah. And then whatever happened with your brother is delaying is that. delaying that, yeah. So that's what you know. You know that Lachlan and Bellis are together. You don't know, well, you can guess by the fact she's sieging the, the South Gate, that Sarcher, Sarcheros is against uh, Duchessa Bellis. Okay. As for the green one, the green border uh, up there, that's a man known as Keegan, uh, Duke's Keegan, and he has always been fairly uh, quiet and to himself, fairly unassuming. You suspect he would side with Lachlan and and Bellis, okay, just because he's a pious man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let me see if I can. All right. So the pink is Cicerdo. The pink is Bellis or Bellis. Okay. Yeah, Cicerdo's is sieging. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, um. Is sieging the pink. And so Cicerdos, who I, I mean, I'm on that side of it, of the argument, right? Against Edric. Well, that's the problem, right? Is if she's sieging Bellis. Oh, okay. So Bellis and Lachlan. Yeah, like Bellis and Lachlan, you uh, know, were okay. uh, pro, yes. or pro pontiff. Right. So I'm on that side. Of it, yeah, you're on Bellis's side. And, but really, I need to get to Duke's Lowe's land. Mm -hmm. and, which is up. Do I need to pass through this? Which is up there. Where? I don't, oh, did I? I might be zoomed in too far. Okay. So I go. do need to go through this gate. Yeah. And there is a road. Like, these hexes are t are in days, right? So you can... it it You don't have to worry about getting too close to, like, the, the Kunabula. Mm -hmm. Like, that, you could say that you would be evading and it would still be fine. Like, yeah. I'd give you guys a chance. Or you could cut wide, you know, and go like that, and then there. So you're looking at about 20 days traveling as you have been. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and real quick with that spot, that 1050 on the Sarcherdos, that's her total size of her army that's gathered there. She has about a 1,000 men. You suspect that she has more down in the spiral. Yeah. So essentially... Bellis is pincered. Okay. I don't think we see any of the yeah, I'm not 1050 seeing or anything like that. It's supposed to be on the pink okay, yeah. pyramid or whatever. The dodecahedron or whatever. Yeah. Well, what that is, is that's, if it works, that's going to be army icons. Yeah. So that white, the lightest part is the front of the army. The black would be the back and then the two flanks. Yeah. And then I made it where I can also, there's the line formation. Oh, nice. And we have the wedge. So hopefully we'll get to mess with that at some point. Hopefully not now, because you are only 11 men. Yeah. And... <laughs> and... Oh, sorry. Go for it. Well, I mean... Just failing some. <laughs> yeah. That's all you gotta... <laughs> yeah. So there's really... There's nothing that I'm going to be able to do to help Bellis here besides get this situation <laughs> sorted so that the banners that were being called to Duke's Low can, Duke's Low can get here to help. Right? Mm hmm so I'll just, I'll have to keep moving. I'll have to take a wide berth so I don't get caught up in this mess here. All right. So you'll kind of cut off that way? Yeah. And then about there, I think you could probably get back on the road if you want to risk it going through Keegan's land and maybe shave off a day. Yeah, let's try it. Okay. Keegan's probably on our side. All right. That's where we'll leave you for now. Unless there's anything you want to do around this area. No. Have to keep moving. I mean, if you want, we can give you a bunch of lantern oil and you can try to light 1,000 some odd soldiers on fire. <laughs> no. I'm it good. works in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to soak the ground with it. Uh -huh. With the uh, liquid that's not actually flammable. <laughs> All right. So, traveling on the later half of the day, you guys are making decent time for a while. Let me make a marker real quick here. Why is it? Let me... 
Yeah, that way I can kind of remember. All right. So you guys are making fairly decent time for a while until about your third or fourth day of travel. And then you actually begin to see the bulk of Lachlan's people, like not soldiers, but like actual serfs. Citizens. Citizens. And, yeah. They've kind of reached this point. It seems like they all had the, about the same idea to flee to either south, south exit or maybe even go on to Sarchados' land. But then they get to hear that she is fighting against them and that the, the third gate is under right. siege by her men. And so you begin to get pressed for time. Well, not time, but you begin to slow down even further. Yeah, I'll call out to the rabble as we're choked <clears throat> up there, and I'll be like, what's the holdup around here? You rabble. <laughs> Can't you see? I got, <laughs> I got a cartload of wool here. <laughs> Not gonna hold the year round. I'm less less rabble than you, so you need to answer. <laughs> but all they know how to say is rabble, rabble, yeah. rabble. <laughs> so you call out and you, uh, what's going on? Yeah, right. Because I probably like you explained all this to Landon, but I would be hearing it for the first time yeah. that there's a siege. So um, a hollow faced commoner with a cloth cap that's slouched over one side looks up at you. And it looks like he had some words for you, but he kind of bites them back when he takes in both your appearance and if he's riding next to you, either Ollie or Dane, as he's current, a.k.a. Dane. Ollie for his strength of arms and Dane because he appears to be dressed fairly well. And he bites back whatever those words were going to be. And he's like, the south exits blocked up, my lord. That Duchessa Sarcheros has laid siege to the... The town, the board, the gate town. Ah, well, of course she did. Thank you, my good fellow. <laughs> he gives a slight <laughs> bob to his head. Yes, my lord. Goes back to hitting mud with a stick. <laughs> Slap in the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dane, seems we've been in this situation before. We have another gate that's going to be closed to us, I think. Uh, the only issue I see here is that we have not a friendly army on the other side to to welcome well, us in. We could take our writ around the area and get all the soldiers and <laughs> force them push through the gate. And push through. <laughs> and Just enough it, for us to get across. You work for me now. <laughs> I have a writ. I, the player, do not know the lay of this land. Would We'd have to cross into another area of uncertain outlook. No. Um, or is this the only one out of here? Well, there is the northern exit, which is somewhere up around there. Yeah, circling so, back around. Yeah, so you'd have to go through Sarcherdos and Keegan's lands, and Sarcherdos would be not hostile to you per se, but her gate is sealed and it is currently under siege. Like some of Lachlan's men would be currently up there helping to hold it. Right. So you have there... Coming up soon. What was it? I believe we said this is yeah. So you have the south exit, which will take you out onto the the sea road. Yeah, which, that's where we were heading originally, but that's the yeah. one that's also under siege too, right? Yeah. Well, you know that there is a fairly big gate town out there. Now you could try to get more information on the besieging army. Yeah, that's probably the best thing. Okay. Well, how about we travel into the gate town, Dane, and see what news we hear there. The gate town's outside or of the... towards the gate. Yeah. Right now you're at... If you can see my ruler, can you? Yes. Okay, so you're at number three. Right. So you're still about two days away from the ramp that would lead up to this, the south exit. And, and there's that, nothing on our side of it? Nothing that you guys have to worry about. If okay. That's the case. Um, but what it is is that exit has a fortress built around it and the gate town is outside of it. Oh, okay. And then the besieging army is beyond that. They're outside <laughs> of the gate town then, right? Mm -hmm. So we could we could get through the gate into the gate town, just the trouble would then come with the sieging army around gate town is am I understanding. Potentially, that right? yes. Yeah. If you want though, you can get more information as you're traveling. Yeah, we'll we'll keep doing that and All right. So for you, you can use bargain if you want to get information, it will be like rumors as you're trading stuff. Yeah, sounds good. Or you can use uh, Persuade 
fast talk status or a uh, uh, appearance, a charisma roll. We'll try the good old bargain. All right. And that goes for you too, John. Failure. Uh, <laughs> no. You just wanted us to hear the river yeah. he's playing by. <laughs> uh, none of them are very high, so I think bargain was my my highest of, of the group. All right. So for your first day, uh, everyone's skittish. They, I mean, they woke up one night, had to flee everything, and Alexander's men were chasing him down and burning everything. So they're they're hungry, they're not happy, and they're eyeing your your goods a, a little too hard. Uh, you think, Hadrius? So you probably don't stop too much, and you let <laughs> probably let Ollie off the or off the leash. <laughs> yeah, I'll let him menace them as he sees fit. So next day, yes. if you wish, or are we doing a check for each day. You can if you want. You got uh, two days before you get where you have to make a decision. Okay, I got a success for the next day. All right. I also All right. got a success for the next day. You both learn that Sarcherdos's army is well outside of the the siege weapons that are stationed in the in Castrum Bellus, which is what is built around the south exit. Okay. Uh they have siege weapons. Sarcherdos's men do not. They're currently building them. And they have been for a while. They they kind of did a quick charge over to try to get in when all of this stuff went down, and they were repelled. And so they were caught off guard. They weren't expecting to actually have to besiege the south gate, or the south exit. So, sounds like there's a possibility that our writ will still work for us to at least get us through the gate, and then we just have to uh, worry about avoiding patrols. Yeah, and we probably want to be there before they get those siege weapons built and uh, a new assault is launched. That would make things much more difficult. Mm -hmm. So, carry on. <laughs> All right. Um, can you roll spots for me? Success. All right. Fail. Thankfully. So, I wonder why it isn't... Okay, there it is. It is showing me your name. All right, so, Dane, you are starting to feel like paranoid you, you know that the dragoons are close <laughs> all they gotta do is bust down that that door i think you guys shared letters you don't know yeah. what the salentium are but you have heard that there is a group of assassins that is from the near east that are employed under edric now alexander's command that right. they hire them out that these are legal assassins and they're said to possess all manner of odd sorceries. They worship forgotten gods, all sorts of crazy rumors that you may or may not believe, but you're starting to feel that itch between your shoulder blades that's saying you need to get going, that you spent too much time kind of being bogged down. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that uh, getting beyond the gate is going to be the best option. All right. But that said, you... With that success, you haven't seen anything. It's just that you're starting to keeping you're keeping your head on a swivel. Keeping multiple gates between us and them is always is always better. Be the best option. So, for what it's worth, uh, Adrius, I feel that that's probably going to be the the best plan. Is we we push on to the gate and try to use our our writ to get across, and then take our luck on the other side. Yes, one problem at a time, then. Can you recognize these men at a glance, or being assassins, I expect they blend in with regular folk? Probably not the assassins, but the dragoons are sure to stand out. Right, will they have any trouble amongst all this mess? Is everybody going to just be like, oh, sure, go on. <laughs> um, How about your work? <laughs> well, I, and I, I don't imagine they'll have much trouble getting the gate open or getting across that second gate. This one, they may until they, they're pretty fierce warriors. So depending on how many there are, they may even just take the gate. Okay. That's, that's, uh, so I wouldn't expect it to, to delay them for very long. Yeah, and if you remember, you did hear that the uh, royal sappers were being called. Right. So they're probably going to meet up, if you were to guess. 
there's probably reinforcements coming. They're going to meet up with the sappers. They're going to bust the gate down okay. and try to overpower Lachlan's men. And that would be what you, Dane, have probably heard over just being around Castrum Solis, Solis, right? Is this is not a common tactic for this part, but in other parts of the world, that's what they just kind of do. They just blow it up, march in. <laughs> All right. As how, so, how far until we reach that gate? Well, you guys were traveling only half days, so that five is actually a ten. That three is a thing. We are at the 18th by the time you're at the three. So so it'd be the 22nd. So you got to, what was that, four more days? And the crowd is starting to get real thick. Uh, if we can, I would say, well, if it's safe to do so, I would say we should we should probably try to go to full day travel get through here as quick as we can. Well, I think we were held up by this mess of people, right? Was that the thing? Well, you'd be getting halved again. Yeah. Yeah, so full day travel would keep you on pace. Let's do full day travel. All right. So give me spot checks. Success. All right. Also success. All right. Don't forget to put your check marks. So, Dane, that familiar feeling of being watched is returning to you. You still don't see anything, but you know something's out there. And now, Hadrius, you don't know if it's because of Dane's paranoia or because of an actual feeling, but you're feeling it too. Yeah. Yeah, you're feeling like you're being watched. Well, so we on, don't see anything yet. Not yet. Nothing that stands out. So on the night of the 20th, you guys hear a very loud explosion down by the second gate and then reports of gunfire echoing off the valley walls. So you imagine that's the dragoons and the sappers coming back from uh, from that second gate area. Yeah, that you guys already passed through. I don't feel that they'll let this crowd stand in their way or slow them down. No, they still have many days, even if they wanted to ride hard and didn't have an army between you and them. But the gate is breached. You can figure. Well, Dan, all we can do is feel uh, anxious. <laughs> we can't go any faster. Yes. We're going as fast as we can. All right. Unless you're feeling so pressed you want to ditch this wagon. No, I think the uh, ruse is is worth it. Worth the uh, the small delay and until something tells us otherwise. Okay. All right. So where are you guys sleeping? Are you just pulling the wagon over? Or? Yeah, when we get to sleeping time, whatever works, right? Okay. Have Ollie sleep in the day and watch it at night? Yeah. All right, roll spot for Ollie. Critical! All right, so one night you hear Ollie let out a yell, and uh, if you woke up, it's quickly followed by a yip from a, a young man that okay. Ollie caught trying to break into your, or trying to steal goods from the wagon. Thought he could be sneaky. Okay, I'll uh, rouse myself. I wear a, a big baggy linen... <laughs> pair of pajamas okay <laughs> <laughs> and a soft cap <laughs> no not really but uh whatever i would wear i'll get out of my bed roller and i'll go to see what it is okay yeah uh so you get up there and ollie has a young man fairly disheveled and and dirty by the collar of his or the lapel of his decent like an average priced doublet yeah and the man at or at the man's feet are a couple apples that have been kind of busted open in the scuffle of Ollie grabbing them. Well, what's going on here, Ollie? Caught this one trying to steal. Had his hand or caught him red-handed. Hmm. What's the law here? Do you know, Dane? <laughs> Ollie? Would you can be... try to just roll a no if you want, but there is actual knowledge of law. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll see if I can remember. Just the regular or. Yeah, well, if it's the attribute, it's always hard or difficult. Mm, I don't know. Well, outside my expertise here. All right. You don't know what it is here, Hadrius, but you know back in Mars Oris, theft is taken very seriously, as one would expect from a city ruled by merchants. So standard stuff if it's the first time offense, fingers on the main hand, so, he, you know, he kind of learns his lesson, uh, potential hand removal. Okay. Flogging, if need be. If he suggests this, as I'll I'll suggest maybe branding 
as the first time, right? That way, maybe he'll learn his lesson with that. Ollie's kind of looking at you guys while you're discussing this. <laughs> well, we're going to get a brand, my lord. <laughs> Just, uh, good point. Just take the fingers. <laughs> he kind of <laughs> looks at you. And... I mean, isn't that what you do, Holly? Or I guess I didn't comb through your resume as well as I might have, but perhaps you don't do that. All right. All right, you're the <laughs> boss. And he puts the kid's hand on the wagon okay. and pulls out his knife. And you kind of see I, him. Can I hmm? try and <laughs> and uh, intervene on this? Because, I mean, even in the, uh, I would imagine even in the main city, we don't just start taking fingers and hands. Oh, well, apologies, Dane. Where I come from, this is how it's done. So while you guys are doing that part again, you hear Ollie go, like, kind of shout off over near this, towards this house. Yeah, like, what are you looking at? Do you want you want to lose some fingers too? <laughs> I'll look the who he's shouting at, but I presume I don't see. The, you do not see. Yeah. Bloke over there, dressed like a woman. I was What's the punishment for a that? Sp <laughs> a spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all, he does that gesture. He looks back and he's like, hmm, "What's the guy learned his lesson? I guess walked away." Well, I think given the <laughs> state, though, like I'm not going to be suddenly alarmed yeah he's just over there staring at us from that window yeah i'll clutch at my useless dagger <laughs> and uh i'll dismiss this kid thank you uh, let lord. him go ollie thank you my lord you're most generous <laughs> and he runs off into the night after picking up the broken apples <laughs> that were laying on the ground that's, that's twice fine. now take his hand <laughs> <laughs> so say it again what you see ollie a man dressed like a woman uh, at the window? He ain't there no more, but yeah, he's dressed in all sorts of, like, woman clothes. You know, like, long, flowing stuff. And, you know, John, Dane can roll a normal, no status, or knowledge religion. You can roll religion, too, if you want on that one, Hadrius. Uh, solar blasted all this talk of assassins to knowledge religion? Yeah. Critical... <sighs> Special. Okay, so you both know that while it isn't women's clothing, that it could be confused for such because the Near East dress, it's a very right. hot and arid climate and they wear loose fitting robe like could possibly conf be confused with dresses and head wraps. And you also know that that's where the Salentium come from. So right. he is describing potentially a Near Eastern assassin. Well, Dane, I think we've finally been caught up by our pursuers. What do you think our oh, odds are? You got the critical, though, right, Travis? Yeah. All right, so you know, because for some reason, uh, this this verse has always apparently <laughs> stuck out to you when it comes to... It's beautiful, the language. Solar, the reason you know of them, because it was a religion, is because of Solar. Okay. And he actually uh, didn't like what they did, because they worship an ancient god of death who came before the current gods and they sacrifice to him and it's a it's a ritual it's their religion to to kill in such a way that the soul goes to their god instead okay. of to at that time solar and so he went and tried to eradicate them and they were the only enemy that solar ever faced where he had to make peace with because for every one of them he killed they killed someone close to him they couldn't kill the god but they could kill those that he viewed as family and friends and so they did so quite effectively. So they've sur they survived that. And that, in the modern era, you also know is kind of blasphemous knowledge. Solar never lost a fight. Yes. You rolled status, John, so you would recognize that as a description of the sal of a Salentium assassin. Yes, uh, I guess our time is, uh, has come due, because we definitely need to be on our guard then. Because how many more days until we reach the gate? I believe you are just a day shy of it at this point so you think this is them just watching trying to puzzle out that we are the target they seek it could be any number of things but yeah like i guess i was asking oh Dane sorry that. <laughs> yeah it, it seems that they either they either have i don't know a description or they have some information about how we're traveling hmm. as uh, i mean they I wouldn't imagine that they just 
watch everybody from from uh, a window. A window. Well, it could be that they're still uncertain on, on, say, which wagon that they'd be in. Maybe they're looking for you. I think it would give them confirmation if we packed up right now and left. So, do you want to trust that they're uncertain at this moment? Stay the course, or shall we pack up now? You've been very able in getting us this far, so I will put my my trust in you to carry me through. Okay. Well, I'll clamber down out of the wagon to confer with Ollie, and I'll just tell him what we think we see, and if Dane's to be believed, this probably outclasses any of our ability to do anything about it, but you should be aware. <laughs> Man should know the risks, and uh. if you plan to flee in the night... I'd like to know now rather than later. Perhaps something could be done about it. Like, not the whole story, you know, about who they'd be going after, but who it is and what they do. Double me pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a situation this puts me at a extreme disadvantage, so... He thinks that he got a good deal on that, <laughs> right. so... Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll allow it. Play him for <laughs> it. <laughs> no, no games. Double me pay, <laughs> or I'll walk right now. Double your pay, and I'll hold my hand out. He shakes it. Well, keep your eyes open. <laughs> I'm going to try to sleep some more if I can. All right. <laughs> good job on the thief, by the way. Yep, just doing my job. I get paid real good for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Don't rub it in. It, uh, it's unbecoming of you, Ollie. <laughs> good night, sir. Yep, and he leans back against the wagon with his halberd resting on his shoulder. But he, he's looking every so often back at that house, yeah. wondering, you know, he doesn't know. Well, I don't know. Do you think Ollie's been to the Near East? He, I think I kind of drew him up as a mercenary. Oh, that's in moments of reflection. That's when I realized I haven't taken the time to really get to know Ollie. Hmm. <laughs> I've just been so caught up in my own affairs. Well, we'll say that he is an experienced mercenary, essentially. And right now, be, because of how stable uh, Natale Solis has been, that that's where they usually go to get their fighting. Oh, okay. Like, to, to learn. Because what it is, is over there, is there's a, a sultan that rules a bunch of tribes, essentially. And every so often, they just rise up and attempt to rebel against the sultan. Right. And because the sultan is the uncle to Alexander, he usually calls in his arm, Alexander's army. Pretty similar to the... Like the Arabian Peninsula and all the Bedouins and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'll try to sleep. <laughs> the night passes uneventfully, <laughs> and the morning dawns uh, with black clouds. Mm. On this, the day right before the gate. It's a good thing I don't go in for omens. You will reach the gate by nightfall. Okay. There is a large press of people. Many of them are clamoring and shouting back at guards you can roll status if you want um either of you Guess I'll go for it i don't Success. look like a peasant exactly you recognize the Failure. uh amongst the guards john you recognize the crest or the 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 markings of lachlan's men and do chessa bellis's men they're they're the majority bellis and uh, hers is the stag some it's like the head of a of an elk or whatnot I think those are two separate animals, but I'll just nod and wink it. <laughs> well, it looks like we are uh we may be in luck in getting through the gate as uh, Duke Lachlan and what was it, Duchess Bellis. Bella Bellis? Yeah. Yeah. As uh still hold this gate. As now we just need to to get somebody's intention or attention that is that is high up enough to clear some of these people out of our way. Is that what you're going to attempt to do? Yeah, as see if I can recognize any any uh, like officer markings or anything on the uniforms. Yeah, go for it. As what would you want? Spot. Uh, you already know what your uh, spotter status, uh, whatever's higher. A failure on that one. All right, so you're combing this crowd. You can't really uh, get a make on any of the guards' status. Uh, do you want to try, Travis? Sure. You said a spotter status? Yeah. Or if you want, you could just go up and start bargaining with a guard 
See if yeah. you can go up the chain. I'll, I'll pick up. I'll pick the nearest guard, and I'll be like, "You there? I'm on important business. Is there any way you can push the crowd aside so we may move up to the gate, sir?" You gonna use your writ? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Do you want a bargain roll? Yes. Failure. What is going on? Oh, that was something I was meaning to, to freaking do, and I forgot. I am thinking about adding in the push. Oh, okay. If you guys want, and then I was also thinking because we're not really using them currently, of using power points in fatigues, kind of like luck that refresh every now and then. I'd say like on a full rest, like an actual rest rest. So the power points would be for mental type stuff, uh, mental and communication. And then the fatigue would be for your physical activities. If you wish, Travis, you can roll, uh, you can push. Okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll make myself more fos- forceful. All right. Special. Okay. All right, so you get this guard's attention, and he w- begins to treat you like common riffraff, but you quickly, Morris, Oris, wheel and deal your way into his better graces. Semper Claudendo. Yeah. Always be closing. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And so what do you want of him? He's listening. Yeah, so... You might lose some uh, cash on this. If yeah, you want, that's... Because it's a bargain. That's fine. I, yeah. I, I'm i just... I'm Yeah, I'll have like some coins sort of <laughs> clinking. I'll do like a... What do you call it? Like the, a little... The roll across yeah, the back of the fingers? Yeah, okay. because I got that little sleight of hand. So I'll just do some sort of trick with my hands and a coin to... And tell him that, you know, we're not, as you can see, we're not amongst the refugees here, sir. We are about the business of trade, and it would look well upon you if you got us up to that gate in a speedy manner. He, uh, his eyes kind of dart around. He's like, crowd's pretty rough, my lord, but I'll see what I can do. And he goes to reach for that coin. Yeah, I'll flip it to him. Yeah, he catches it deftly, and he will attempt to use and intimidate. Let's see. How much, uh... How much are you paying him? I don't know the the coinage. I don't think I've gotten a look at that yet. Well, how it works, it's just based on your wealth, right? So, so like a poor payment or an average payment? Would, so this would be so like an average bribe. All basically. right, so an average bribe would be one from your cash because your average wealth, yeah. your your wealth bracket is average, right? Yeah. So yeah, so that'd be one. The thing I don't know is how much cash I Oh, have, yeah, right? that's right. I forgot about that for a couple times now. Uh, let's see where I put it. We'll go through it. So, everyone, real quick, Travis, you can roll 1d4 plus 1. Or, no, sorry. Yeah, 1d4 plus 1. Brandon, you roll 2d6. So that's how much you have on hand right now. And I just gave away 1? Yeah. Okay. But that you get that amount every pay period as long as you've been using your bargaining skill yeah. and okay. trading. That's what is on hand? Yeah. But yours is wealthy, right? Yeah. So four units of wealthy because it says eight right now. Oh, uh, that's right. I did it for you. Yeah. Keep that. Okay. Uh, John, you're affluent. Yes. Two D four, and your your bracket would yeah would be that doesn't work, John. Clearly in the wrong business. Can you get me that roll, John? There we go. All right. So that's how much you have on hand, and his because his is expensive. His is essentially double what yours value is, Travis. And because Brandon is wealthy, his is double what John's is, right? right. So it's all just it's relative. relative. Yeah, yeah. I where, get it. Yeah, so I'll flip them that. Where am I putting that at? I believe it's down at the bottom. There's yeah. uh, income <gasps> in savings. And then in your savings, also put the same amount. But your cash on hand is where it would come in. And then in your income, you would put affluent, I believe is what you are. When we end for today, Travis, you'll have to tell me what price you're paying for Ollie to yeah. determine how much he's going to be charging. Yeah, I think I I remember when in the first session, I think we went on. Let's see, I wrote it down here. He's a cheap merchant guard. Okay, it's cheap in income bracket. Yeah, yeah. And what I should have done is I should have capped his skills lower. But I think you 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 were saying it was like. At cheap, it was 25 to whatever the base yeah. was or whatever. I, when I made him, I just made him. But I can pay for what you made him at. I don't have a problem with that either. If you want, if he's like an average, mm-hmm. I can pay average. All right. Uh, we'll, I'll worry about that later. So, yeah, you take the coin. 
This guard, you apparently got really lucky. He's got 120 intimidation. <laughs> Jeez, God, like, <laughs> we must find a different gate, Dane. He'll kill us all. <laughs> 1D, 100. Let's hire him on as our second one. And he just got a normal success, so <laughs> right. skills above 100 apparently don't matter too much. So, yeah, he uh, turns and he starts sh uh, shouting at the crowd to disperse important people coming through. He's using the butt of his halberd to kind of start pushing them aside. One of his other fellow guardmen see him doing this and start kind of backing him up, okay. figuring that you must be someone important. Yeah, so we'll start making our way through the void mm -hmm. as it opens up. And let's see. We need a luck from either of you. I think I rolled the last one, John. You want me to roll it again or you want to do this one? I get it. That's success. Nice. You avoid a riot. Hmm. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> And by nightfall, you have made it up the trail and are in the... Uh, Fortress area? Yeah, the the key, essentially the keep yeah. part of Castrum Bellis. And he says, you know, like, I got you where you want to go. All good, my lord. Yes. Yeah, Solar shine his light upon you. I don't know if that's what we say. But it I works. It. I'm fine with that. And uh, I, you know what? That was pretty impressive, buddy. So here's another coin for you. He actually intimidated uh, more money out of you. And... <laughs> yeah. All right. You need a different line of work with with that skill. Nightfall. So it's the sun has set. There are guards at the front gate. I think we're going to keep pushing. All right. We're getting into that town. And then we'll, we'll see where we're at there. We might have to take a rest there. But okay. as long as I see a way through, I think we'll keep pushing. And so, yeah, we'll move the team up to the these guards, these new guards, and much like the last guard I spoke to, I'll be like, um, we're about the business of trade, good sirs. You gonna use your writ? Not yet. Okay. Bargain? Please, I pray, tell you open, or please, I pray, open the gates for me. Glint, glint, glint. <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> Pretty soon I'll be shuffling bundles of wool on my feet <laughs> instead you of You can <laughs> downgrade your currency you could only say pay half yeah i'll stick with this with what i've been doing so far but maybe i'll reserve it if i don't like their answer and just pull that writ out but yeah bargain here we go another bargain where are you at all right i made the hot key thing success he eyes the coin and he's like you know there's an army out there right yes sir and i don't intend to fight it and i don't intend to open the gate to let an army in <laughs> I feel like I've had this conversation before. Well, can I have a look at the gate, perhaps? <laughs> he gestures. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, now that we're here, why don't you open it up? <laughs> the armor is on the outside of the town, as I understand it. Uh, uh, fast talking? Sure. <laughs> Failure. Not going to push. Okay. <sighs> Very well. By order of Duke Lachlan, please open the gate for me, and I'll produce the writ. Yeah, he takes it and looks it over, and uh, he kind of frowns. This is a Bellis uh, guard. Right. But they are allies. Roll your bargain, except it's um, times two. It's easy. You going to throw anything else, you know, like very important for Duke's Lachlan type stuff, your head if you don't? No, I won't do any threat. In fact, that coin will disappear because I had to get the writ out. All right. But uh, I got a regular success again. So he is reluctant, but he does shout up to open the gate, but only just so, right? And you hear uh, the, was it, the winch begin to go right. and the chain begin to clank as it opens. It uh, lifts up just enough for you to get you and your wagon through. And on the other side, you see the burned out remains of the south south exit village or right. town so it has been devastated then huh mm -hmm. oh wow <laughs> okay well like i said they came in right and i did that initial assault yeah and yeah. got repelled right okay in the very if you guys want to roll spot we can yeah well I'll, i mean i imagine dane is sort of peering out of the wagon there at the okay. way forward and Success. Uh, i'll turn to him and i'll be like are you ready for this dane I didn't expect it to be like this. And I know that 
that there was uh, some fighting, but all those people... Well, if they don't just kill us outright for being some sort of ploy by Duke Lachlan or what have you, then they sure they will search us and hold us for however long they feel like it. But I do have to say that feels a little more hopeful than going back towards assassins and dragoons. What say you? Mm. Yes, as I feel mm. our chances, uh, while they may not look good, as our fortune may have turned uh, to the better here. Well, Ollie, this happened what? to be the day that they finished their their uh, siege weapons and are going to test them. <laughs> <laughs> right as we here come comes here the comes quick. the trebuchet. Calibrate them on that wagon <laughs> over there. Perfect. It'll find the distance. For yeah. So um, I'll tell Ollie to to look less threatening, please, sir. I don't want them to take us for armed men and. I guess we'll be off. So, all right, that's where we'll stop with you. Okay. So, Brandon, mm -hmm. you want to roll a luck for me? Coming right up. Success. All right. So, most of your days are filled with hard riding, as much as you think the horses can take. Mm -hmm. These horses are built fairly sturdy. So, you, you, as long as you don't exhaust them, they'll be fine. Yeah. Maybe you take an extra day here or there to rest them, but for the most part, they can keep going. They're built for it. And the dust is kept down by a constant drizzle of rain. You make it through Duchessa Sar Sarcerdos's land without any problem. You figure that almost all of her men on the plains are at that gate. Yeah. You make it through Keegan's realm. Again, his men aren't out at all. His gate remains unburned. So you're not quite sure what's up with him. If you wish, you can try to stop at the gate town and get information or right on. Yeah, I will try to get some information. All right. You can roll status. Status. Success. All right. You quickly learn that Dukes Keegan has, ni has neither spoken on the subject of Alexander raising himself to king. He has declared neutrality completely. Let Solar sort this out in a way he sees fit. And until such time, he has closed his gate, the north gate, down completely and isn't helping anyone. He okay. wishes no part. He wishes no blood on his hands. And he wishes that they could settle this peacefully. And so he has begun uh, negotiations. But that's in private. Okay. Um, but his stance is one of neutrality. All right. And then you ride on, if you wish. Get me another luck roll. Okay. This will be for the next four days. Success. All right. Everything's going fine. No, not a bandit in sight. And the rain remains fairly light. And towards the end, because we're now getting towards the beginning of summer, uh, it does start to clear up, and you do get some sun. It does not enough to dry anything out yet, so the dust remains down. And one last roll before we end it here for today. Give me a spot check. And here's the spot. Failure. All right. So uh, you crest a grass-covered hill. The, that is almost obscuring the road that Solar and his men built oh so long ago that has remained whole and hardy throughout the the centuries. And you see Duke, or uh, Castrum Lowe in the distance. It's a fortress built on a river. In fact, it is the only part of the river that is deemed safe to cross because it's either rapids or an increasingly uh, steep series of waterfalls that eventually will hit the sea to the west. Okay. You What's see, the name of that river? I'll get back to you on that okay. one. In the distance, you see that. In front of it, on the south side, you see several banners. You're unable to make most of them out. You do spot your colors in a small band. Um, and then across the river, you see more fires. Um, not like like uh, campfires or burning and you see more of the Velo Veloxian colors on that side. Okay. You figure your father's probably reached here and has rallied his banners. Okay. So that's where we'll end it for today. Thank you for playing. Yeah. Uh, if you need to know, Brandon, it's the 23rd of Spring's End Okay. for you, and it is the 21st of, or 22nd of Spring's End for okay. you and Dane. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I hope you guys had fun. Yeah. I'm sorry that... Thank you.
This has been a Death Watch production. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.